Light. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. John chapter 3, verse 19. We call the story of Jesus, told so differently, yet to my mind so consistently by four narrators, the gospel. What makes this tell the good news? Is everything in the story of Christ's life on earth good news? Is it good news that the one only good man was served by his fellow men as Jesus was served, cast out of the world in torture and shame? Is it good news that he came to his own and his own received him not? What makes it fit, I repeat, to call the tale good news? If we ask this or that theologian, we should, in so far as he was a true man and answered from his own heart and not from the tradition of the elders, understand what he saw in it to make it good news to him, though it might involve what would be anything but good news to some of us. The deliverance it might seem to this or that man to bring might be founded on such notions of God as to not a few of us contain as little of good as of news. To share in the deliverance which some men find in what they call the gospel, for all do not apply the word to the tell itself, but to certain deductions made from the epistles and their own consciousness of evil, we should have to believe such things of God as would be the opposite of an evangel to us, yea, a message from hell itself. We should have to imagine that whose possibility would be worse than any ill from which their good news might offer us deliverance. We must first believe in an unjust God from whom we have to seek refuge. True, they call him just, but say he does that which seems to the best in me the essence of injustice. They will tell me I judge after the flesh. I answer, is it then to the flesh the Lord appeals when he says, Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? Is he not the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world? They tell me I was born in sin, and I know it to be true. They tell me also that I am judged with the same severity as if I had been born in righteousness, and that I know to be false. They make it a consequence of the purity and justice of God that he will judge us, born in evil, for which birth we were not accountable, by our sinfulness instead of by our guilt. They tell me, or at least give me to understand, that every wrong thing I have done makes me subject to be treated as if I had done that thing with the free will of one who had in him no taint of evil, when perhaps I did not at the time recognize the thing as evil, or recognized it only in the vaguest fashion. Is there any gospel in telling me that God is unjust, but that there is a way of deliverance from him? Show me my God unjust, and you wake in me a damnation from which no power can deliver me, least of all God himself. It may be good news, to such as are content to have a God capable of unrighteousness, if only he be on their side. Who would not rejoice to hear from Matthew or Mark or Luke what, in a few words, he meant by the word gospel, or rather, what in the story of Jesus made him call it good news? Each would probably give a different answer to the question, all the answers consistent, and each a germ from which the other might be reasoned. But in the case of John, we have his answer to the question. He gives us, in one sentence of two members, not indeed the gospel according to John, but the gospel according to Jesus Christ himself. He had often told the story of Jesus, the good news of what he was and did and said. What in it all did John look upon as the essence of the goodness of its news? In his gospel he gives us all about him, the message concerning him. Now he tells us what in it makes it to himself and to us good news, tells us the very goodness of the good news. It is not now his own message about Jesus, but the soul of that message, that which makes it gospel, the news Jesus brought concerning the Father and gave the disciples as his message to them to deliver to men. Throughout the story, Jesus, in all he does and is and says, is telling the news concerning his Father, which he was sent to give to John and his companions, that they might hand it on to their brothers. 
But here, in so many words, John tells us what he himself has heard from the word, what in some he has gathered from Jesus as the message he has to declare. He has received it in no systematic form. It is what a life, the life, what a man, the man, has taught him. The word is the Lord. The Lord is the gospel. The good news is no faggot of sticks of a man's gathering on the Sabbath. Every man must read the word for himself. One may read it in one shape, another in another. All will be right, if it be indeed the word they read, and they read it by the lamp of obedience. He who is willing to do the will of the Father shall know the truth of the teaching of Jesus. The Spirit is given to them that obey him. But let us hear how John reads the word, hear what is John's version of the gospel. This then is the message, he says which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Ah, oh, my heart, this is indeed the good news for thee. This is a gospel. If God be light, what more, what else can I seek than God, than God himself? Away with your doctrines! Away with your salvation from the justice of a God whom it is a horror to imagine! Away with your iron cages of false metaphysics! I am saved, for God is light. My God, I come to thee. That thou shouldst be thyself is enough for time and eternity, for my soul and all its endless need. Whatever seems to me darkness, that I will not believe of my God. If I should mistake and call that darkness which is light, will he not reveal the matter to me, setting it in the light that lighteth every man, showing me that I saw but the husk of the thing, not the kernel? Will he not break open the shell for me, and let the truth of it, his thought, stream out upon me? He will not let it hurt me to mistake the light for darkness, while I take not the darkness for light. The one comes from the blindness of the intellect, the other from the blindness of heart and will. I love the light, and will not believe at the word of any man, or upon the conviction of any man, that that which seems to me darkness is in God. Where would the good news be if John said, God is light, but you cannot see his light, you cannot tell, you have no notion what light is. What God means by light is not what you mean by light. What God calls light may be horrible darkness to you, for you are of another nature from him. Where, I say, would be the good news of that? It is true, the light of God may be so bright that we see nothing, but that is not darkness, it is infinite hope of light. It is true also that to the wicked the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. But is that because the conscience of the wicked man judges of good and evil oppositely to the conscience of the good man? When he says, Evil be thou my good, he means by evil what God means by evil, and by good he means pleasure. He cannot make the meanings change places. To say what our deepest conscience calls darkness may be light to God is blasphemy. To say light in God and light in man are of differing kinds is to speak against the spirit of light. God is light far beyond what we can see. But what we mean by light, God means by light. And what is light to God is light to us, or would be light to us if we saw it, and will be light to us when we do see it. God means us to be jubilant in the fact that he is light, that he is what his children made in his image mean when they say light, that what in him is dark to them is dark by excellent glory, by too much cause of jubilation, that however dark it may be to their eyes, it is light even as they mean it, light for their eyes and souls and hearts to take in the moment they are enough of eyes enough of souls enough of hearts to receive it in its very being living light thou wilt not have me believe anything dark of thee thou wilt have me so sure of thee as to dare to say that is not of god which i see dark see unlike the master 
if I am not honest enough, if the eye in me be not single enough to see thy light, thou wilt punish me. I thank thee, and purge my eyes from their darkness, that they may let the light in. And so I become an inheritor with thy other children of that light which is thy Godhead, and makes thy creatures need to worship thee. In thy light we shall see light. All men will not, in our present imperfection, see the same light. But light is light notwithstanding, and what each does see is his safety if he obeys it. In proportion as we have the image of Christ mirrored in us, we shall know what is and is not light. But never will anything prove to be light that is not of the same kind with that which we mean by light, with that in a thing which makes us call it light. The darkness yet left in us makes us sometimes doubt of a thing whether it be light or darkness. But when the eye is single, the whole body will be full of light. To fear the light is to be untrue, or at least comes of untruth. No being, for himself or for another, needs fear the light of God. Nothing can be in light inimical to our nature which is of God, or to anything in us that is worthy. All fear of the light, all dread lest there should be something dangerous in it, comes of the darkness still in those of us who do not love the truth with all our hearts. It will vanish as we are more and more interpenetrated with the light. In a word, there is no way of thought or action which we count admirable in man, in which God is not altogether adorable. There is no loveliness, nothing that makes man dear to his brother man, that is not in God. Only it is infinitely better in God. He is God our Saviour. Jesus is our Saviour, because God is our Saviour. He is the God of comfort and consolation. He will soothe and satisfy his children better than any mother her infant. The only thing he will not give them is leave to stay in the dark. If a child cry, I want the darkness, and complain that he will not give it, yet he will not give it. He gives what his child needs, often by refusing what he asks. If his child say, I will not be good, I prefer to die, let me die, his dealing with the child will be as if he said, No, I have the right to content you, not giving you your own will, but mine, which is your one good. You shall not die. You shall live to thank me that I would not hear your prayer. You know what you ask, but not what you refuse. There are good things God must delay giving until his child has a pocket to hold them, till he gets his child to make that pocket. He must first make him fit to receive and to have. There is no part of our nature that shall not be satisfied, and that not by lessening it, but by enlarging it to embrace an ever-enlarging enough. Come to God, then, my brother, my sister, with all thy desires and instincts, all thy lofty ideals, all thy longing for purity and unselfishness, all thy yearning to love and be true, all thy aspiration after self-forgetfulness and child life in the breath of the Father. Come to him with all thy weaknesses, all thy shames, all thy futilities, with all thy helplessness over thy own thoughts, with all thy failure, yea, with the sick sense of having missed the tide of true affairs. Come to him with all thy doubts, fears, dishonesties, meannesses, paltrinesses, misjudgments, wearinesses, disappointments, and stalenesses. Be sure he will take thee and all thy miserable brood, whether of draggle-wing angels or covert-seeking snakes, into his care, the angels for life, the snakes for death, and thee for liberty in his limitless heart. For he is light, and in him is no darkness at all. 